Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys who, well, I can't say welcome back and then say, hey y'all and welcome. Mm, um, dang, why am I screwing up so much? For those of you who are new, welcome. For those of you who are returning to my channel, I just wanna say welcome back. It is so good to be back on YouTube again. I'm back with a brand new video where I'm sharing five of my best self-care secrets after a c-section. Now for those of you who do not know, I actually gave birth to my second daughter named Rosa roughly about eight weeks ago. And since I had not previously covered post-pregnancy self-care tips in 2020 when I had my first daughter, I wanted to go ahead and make a video for you guys so I can share with you not only tips that help me in my post-pregnancy recovery, but I also, as a bonus, want to share with you guys some products that were super helpful during this crucial time. Within this video, I'm gonna share with you guys tips that I use to help me recover physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because I'm gonna share with you guys the products that were helpful during and after my hospital stay. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video, please be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you can be notified anytime I post a new video. So if you're into weight loss, meal preps, self-care, and beauty just like I am, make sure you go ahead and join the family so that way we can continue these discussions. So the first self-care tip I have is to get plenty of rest. I know this is so much easier said than done, especially when you're taking care of a newborn, but you have to keep in mind that rest is essential during this time. Getting plenty of rest is essential during this time because it actually helps you maintain your energy levels while you and your baby are awake. So when is the best time to sleep? I'm glad you asked that question. The best time to sleep is pretty much anytime your baby sleeps. So trust me, staying awake while your baby is asleep is just shooting yourself in the foot. I know that when I had Fair Rose, I used to think, well, the only way I can get things done is when she's asleep. So I'm gonna wait for her to go to sleep and then I'm gonna handle all my chores. Well, she would go to sleep and while she was asleep and I was doing my work, by the time I was done with all that stuff, I was exhausted. She would wake up and then it would be like round two, three, four, however many naps she had throughout the day. And I would wind up like running myself ragged thinking that I could keep up with her. And I just couldn't. So I finally took the advice of some friends of mine who are mothers and just finally slept when she slept. And I found when I did that, I was actually happier, I was healthier, and I was able to be more present for my baby. So trust me, sleeping when she sleeps is not a bad thing. Sleeping when he sleeps is not a bad thing. You definitely wanna take advantage of the time while you have it because you wanna be able to capitalize on your peace, right? Why not? By the way, don't get hung up on you not doing anything when your child goes to sleep. If the dishes are piling up, laundry's piling up, that kind of thing, these are things that are going to happen because nothing is gonna be perfect, especially after those first few weeks that baby is home with you. You know, um, those things will eventually get taken care of. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in my video. But for right now, just keep in mind that getting plenty of rest is one of the top things one of the top most important things you can do for yourself in terms of self-care. So this brings me to my next self-care tip, which is also extremely important. And this is also something I'm struggling with, even with now being a mom of two. It's important that you take it easy and don't put more on yourself than you can handle. Again, this, this seems to be like another thing that I struggle with as well. Um, even though I've had my experience with my first child, I'm still sort of dealing with the initial almost the initial experience like I'm having you know I'm having another child all over again I'm dealing with the same things I was dealing with with my first daughter and but now it's a little bit more difficult because I'm having to run behind a toddler which my daughter is now about 20 months um 20 22 months actually um and my youngest daughter who's two months and so I'm running behind Farrah Rose but I'm also taking care of Rosalie and that has become a little bit more challenging in a sense where I now have to make sure that I remember those things that I dealt with when I had Fair Rose and I have to take that advice that I was given before about hey don't put too much on yourself remind yourself that there are easier ways to do things remember what you learn and remember how you applied these things to make your life easier the first time so all you have to do is apply it again. It can be a little bit difficult, especially when you're dealing with more than one kid. In this case, I'm dealing with two. 
but in those times I really have to sit back and I have to remind myself that the con the, with, with weighing pros and cons, the con of not making sure that you follow those, those same, the same procedure that you followed uh, when you had Fair Rose, the, basically the con of that is that you are going to run yourself ragged and you're not going to be as efficient. You're not going to be able to be 100% present for your kids, for yourself, for your husband, you know, because you're so busy trying to, um, I want to say like, because you're just, you're just, you're busy being busy, but you're not really productive. Do you know what I mean? You want to make sure that you are being practical and that the things that you set out for yourself to be done for the day can be done for the day and you're not putting more on yourself than you can handle. It's all about being realistic. I'll give you a perfect example. I used to think like, okay, I'm going to get up early in the morning and I'm going to wash dishes and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to da 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 And over time, I started realizing that there were certain things that just weren't getting done. And so when they weren't getting done, I would almost feel guilty and I would just feel bad because I'm like, dang, I really wanted to get this finished. And I'm looking at the end of the day and there are five things on my checklist that haven't even been touched. And I'm thinking, well, either I'm going to just go to bed and feel bad about myself or I'm going to try to speed through and get everything done by the end of the night before I put my head on my pillow. And that's not realistic because it's known that pretty much when you have a new child, you know, come into the world, you're running behind that child. And there's absolutely positively nothing wrong with making sure that your child is good amongst any and everything else. All that other unimportant stuff can wait. If it's not anything that's going to affect your child, like it, it's just that stuff can wait. It's just not as important. Your priorities change when you have kids. So when you have kids, it's all about them and their needs and that's all that matters. So keep in mind that when you are very tired by the end of the day because you've been running behind your kids, just know that that means you're a really good parent. I tend to deal with mommy guilt a lot. If you are not familiar with mommy guilt, it's sort of like this unrealistic ideal of a perfect mom. A mom can get all the chores done. She can tend to the kids. She can you know, tend to her husband. She can make sure the laundry doesn't stack up. She can make sure the dishes are washed every night, that there's a hot meal cooked every single night. There's not anything out of place in the house. Everything is, you know, cleaned up. That's just not life. Especially when you're talking about a new kid coming into the picture, that's not life at all. Does the house need to be clean? Yeah. Is the laundry building up? More than likely. Are the dishes dirty? Of course. But if these things are on pause, at this point in time in your life, they're on pause for a really good reason. And that's because you're taking care of a whole nother human being. That's gonna take a lot of time. It's gonna take a lot of effort from you. And it's gonna take a lot of your energy to which you're just not gonna be able to put forth the same energy you used to put forth towards all these other chores that at this point in time in your life mean nothing. So let me give you a tip that helped me, especially in the early weeks. What I did was I actually took account of when my baby was asleep versus when my baby was awake. I would get sort of a gauge to really understand like how long she's sleeping. So that way I know how long I have. Now pending that I've got enough rest myself, if I can afford to stay up while my baby is sleeping, then I'll say, okay, well, you know what? There were some things on the back burner that I left there. So let me go ahead and take care of them. If it's something really that'll just take me a few minutes, I would go ahead and knock those things out in a few minutes and then I would go take a seat and I would get a little bit of rest. I would just close my eyes for a few minutes, something like that, because this is the time where this is sort of my time in a sense to get some peace. You know, when she gets back up, it's go time. I really kind of eyeball things to determine like, okay, well, what can I get done in a small amount of time where it won't take me her entire nap? And I'll say, well, let me go knock out some laundry or I see a, some dishes in the sink. I can get this done in like five minutes. I need to make sure that I'm on my A game because I need to be there for her. Another option is to actually enlist other people to help you out with your workload. So that way you don't have that much on you. Or you can flip it and say, hey, can you watch the baby while I take care of these things? That way I can get something done around the house and my baby is still being tended to. My third tip is something that I'm pretty sure you won't hear in a whole lot of other self-care videos as it pertains to post-pregnancy tips is really pampering yourself. Something really crazy happened after I had my second child. 
So after I had my second child, I really got to a point where I knew that I didn't want to have any more kids. And if you guys had watched my earlier vlog, in that vlog, I actually stated that me and my husband do not want any more kids. We are definitely stopping at two. And that's where it's at. P.S. If you haven't gotten a chance to watch that video, I'm going to go ahead and pop it up here for you guys. So feel free to go ahead and take a look at that once you're done watching this video. Boop. So, <laughs> boop. So basically, after I had Rosa, I felt like I needed to do something. I didn't know really what it was. It's, but I was just like, I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I'm getting older and I'm not where I want to be in terms of how I present myself. I need makeup. I need skincare. I need a new wardrobe. I need to get my hair done. I need, I need to get my feet done. I need to get my nails done. I just need to take care of me. I really was afraid to do things while I was pregnant because there's certain things you can't put on your skin. You can't you know, it's just certain things you cannot do because of where, you know, the fact that you could be affecting your baby. So I didn't want to try those things, but please believe the minute I had Rosa, I went to go get my teeth whitened. I, um, I was getting my nails done, toes done. Well, I had my lashes done. I don't have them done anymore. I adopted a new uh, skincare regimen, which I'm actually going to be putting up here on my channel very soon. So I'm going to be sharing that those tips with you guys as well. I did everything I could think of because I was just like, I'm in a place right now where I want to be able to take care of myself. I want to be able to, you know, listen, I want to be a grown woman about mine, okay? I'm not trying to be walking around here looking crazy. I need to be moving into the, you know, next part of my life where I am really and truly taking care of myself and doing the damn thing and not out here in these streets looking rough. You know, that's just, that's not who I am anymore. I'm a mom now. I got to represent. Hold on one second. Do you have your change? Yeah. Okay. She pooped? Yeah. Let's bring it back. All right, real quick, I just want to let you know, this list is not the end all be all. These are just five tips out of, I'm sure, probably a million that you can find on the internet in terms of your self-care post-pregnancy, right? I don't want anyone to feel like this video, I'm saying that this video is like the end all be all. These are things that I have tried most recently and these are things that I'm still actively practicing to make sure that I feel better about myself, to make sure that I can serve my baby and help with my recovery. So these tips have helped me personally and I'm really hoping that they'll do the same for you. If you are digging these tips, go ahead and hit the like button below. That will be the thumbs up icon just below this video. That'll let YouTube know that you found this video helpful and hopefully this video will be bumped up in the search rankings. Sorry about that guys, my camera sort of stopped out of nowhere. So we're back. And it's getting a little bit darker outside so you'll probably notice that the lighting is a little bit different. I do apologize for that. Um, so hopefully I won't be looking weird. So uh, I feel that number four's tip tends to be overlooked. It is so important to make sure that you have a good and well-balanced diet. A good diet also includes being uh, staying hydrated as well. It's important that you have a well-balanced diet so that way you can maintain your energy levels, but it also helps with wound healing. On average, about six to eight glasses of water a day will do you, but drink more if you're thirsty. And having a diet that is rich in fiber will definitely help you. I also have some super cool meal prep ideas so that way you can mix up your at-home recipes. So I'll go ahead and pop those up here as well for you to take a look at as soon as you're done watching this video. Last but definitely not least, number five. Emotionally, we women can be all over the place. We just are trying to wrap our heads around how we're gonna deal with life having to be responsible for this tiny little human, right? So whether we gave birth vaginally or via C-section, we are still trying to make sense of how we're going to deal with, you know, having a new child and the impact it's gonna have on us. And it can be exciting, but at the same time, it can be a bit scary. That being said, baby blues is a real thing. If you're not familiar with baby blues, basically baby blues is having anxiety, sadness, crying spells, or trouble sleeping. Fortunately, baby blues only lasts up to roughly about two weeks and it should go away on its own. The best way to navigate this is to basically talk to someone. You can talk to your healthcare provider, your spouse, you can talk to other moms or support groups, basically people who will be able to help you out through this time. 
and give you some really good advice as well as give you some support. I think it's so important that we as mothers come together and we support one another, especially when there is a new mom on the block who is experiencing baby blues. Feel free to also leave a comment below and you can connect with other people who are a part of this community. So I wanna stress that baby blues is very different from postpartum depression. Postpartum depression is actually more severe than baby blues. It lasts longer. And the only way really around that is through treatment. So if you think you are going through postpartum depression, the best thing to do is to talk with your healthcare provider. So that way they can go ahead and get you the treatment that you need. And also, if you are interested in reading up on baby blues versus postpartum depression, I've actually left a link in the description box for you. So you guys can go ahead and read up on that whenever you'd like. So we are officially at the halfway point of this video. If you are still watching this video at this point, I'm so proud of you and you're a freaking rock star. And I love the fact that you are taking your self care seriously. Okay, I just wanted to say that. Now I'm going to share with you guys the products that I use to help me in my post-pregnancy recovery. So one of the must-haves are basically like women's stretchy underwear um, or stretchy diapers. They're basically like high-waisted or using the overnight maxi pads with wings. And so just a note that you're actually not supposed to be using tampons whenever you're getting over a surgery like this because you could be susceptible to an infection. Sorry, I have to like step over here to get these because there's so many, there's so many things I wanna show you guys that'll help and they're like all over the place. I tend to like the black post-pregnancy trainers because it seems to me like almost anyone that I buy, I'm not gonna just say just the black ones, but I feel like anyone that I buy from the store is always more comfortable than the ones that I get from the hospital. Let me tell y'all, this right here is super uncomfortable. And for anyone that is used to like, who who's had, you know, babies or who's had any type of, abdominal surgery where this is required this right here is for the birds i'm sorry i know it's free and and you could walk away with no binder but i would just i'd rather not do this this is just too uncomfortable and i'm not here for it so i wound up buying this one and so this is basically what it looks like not really my cup of tea. Don't get me wrong, like it's comfortable. I did wear it because I felt like I needed support. The later end of my pregnancies where my stomach is really getting heavy, my back pain is getting crazy. I did buy this when I was pregnant with Farrah Rose and it did do its job. I did actually sort of repurpose it too because I felt like I used it as a cover underneath some shirts I had that might've come up a little bit too much. So if it was the shirt was a little short, I would just hang this down a little bit more. So that way my belly is not like poking out on the bottom and people are like, oh my God. So you can see that I pretty much worn this to the point that the, the front of it actually has like a bulge. <laughs> and then I'm gonna show you guys the one that I bought recently. This one I got from Target for about, this freaking earring is just gonna be the death of me today. This is the Shrink X Belly Postpartum Belly Wrap with Bamboo Charcoal. Listen, this is the only one I found, okay? To be honest with you, this is really, oh, gosh. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna open it up real quick. It's gonna be kinda loud because it's Velcro. Okay, wasn't that loud. So this is what it looks like. And definitely used. So you wrap the main part, which is this here, around you. And then once you have that wrapped around you, this kind of like, you use this as like a secondary wrap and then you wrap it around the part that's wrapped already around you. So it kind of helps to tighten things up. So you have like major compression, right? This is helpful for back pain. This is help for, helpful for abdominal uh, pain. This is like the business here. So this one I would definitely recommend from Target. I'm gonna admit again, I was being impulsive and I got this in a smaller size, not reading the size. If I read the size, I would have gotten a larger one, but I got this in a smaller size. I'm probably like a medium large and this is like a small medium. So even though it's like just right, I was still able to use it and I was even able to work out in it comfortably. So I definitely recommend this. This is a good brand. They know what they're doing. I love it. So this is kind of like a product review kind of a situation, but it's really, really good. So a few days after my C-section, I did use a heating pad. 
This heating pad is the one that I got from Walgreens. This is the Express Heat. Y'all, I'm not even kidding. Okay, so one side is kind of like, meh, whatever. But this side right here, it is so velvety soft. It's velvety soft, okay? It's dirty, so y'all please don't judge me. It's it's really, really like a very, very nice on the skin. I've literally had this on like over my clothes and I've even had it on my skin directly. And on my skin, it does feel good, but sometimes I tend to put the heat a little high. So I have to have some sort of layer in between. This also comes with this little um, sort of remote, if you will. And it's got four modes on it. This, it goes from warm, to low, to medium, to high. So you have to be careful of that. Make sure you don't get it like, unless you really like heat, high is high. And when I tell you this probably takes about a good five minutes to really get to the level that it needs to get to, but this is everything. Like this is, this is, this is it. And this heating pad actually has a two hour shut off where a lot of heating pads, they don't, they, they shut off quicker than that. I use this even when I was pregnant, but I was also advised that when I do use it, when I am pregnant, not to put it on my stomach for longer than 10 minutes because you don't want to cook your baby. And this is uh, $25 at Walgreens if they still sell this, but if they don't sell this, I'm pretty sure that they have something similar to it. Y'all, pregnancy pillows are absolutely life. I have like about three or four of them. This is like one of them. So... This is, I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but this is like just one section, just one section of my huge pregnancy pillow. It is completely detachable. It attaches by the zipper. I don't know if you guys can see, um, but this is how it attaches to the, uh, the other part. I have an even bigger piece over here and they would just all basically zip up together and it kind of creates like a really large U shape and it's just super helpful, it's super soft, it's very durable, high quality. I have another piece, but that's just too much for this area right now, but they just kind of like zip together. And so sometimes I'll use the larger piece, um, but if I don't feel like having my bed cluttered up and everything, I'll just use a smaller piece and then like I'll sleep with that. My friend actually gifted this to me when I was pregnant with my first daughter, so big ups to my boo Pam, I appreciate you boo. Thank you for hooking us this up. I asked my girlfriend and she said they were roughly about $50 online. I'm not sure of the brand because I don't see a tag that's on it, but I mean, you could probably find like products like that any and everywhere. And these days I'm pretty sure they're not even that expensive. Even I would use that in tandem like with my heating pad. I would put my heating pad like over my shirt and I put the pillow over the heating pad. So I just chill out just like that and watch TV. If I had just gotten like my C-section and you know how sometimes it feels kind of weird like whenever I'm like sneezing, coughing, I feel like a little bit of abdominal pain. I feel like those two together, the heating pad and the pregnancy pillow really come together and they help me out. So I'm like, ooh, thank you Jesus. I wound up going to Walmart and I got these compression socks and they're amazing. I got this as a two pack. They were like no more than $10. These are like ankle, um, like ankle socks or whatever you call them, ankle compression socks. I don't know. These things are high quality and they are just about, they are really about the business. I have washed this already a couple of times and they still keep their compression, which is amazing. And I made sure to check the size because sometimes I get stuff that's not my size because I'm too busy. Like I can be really impulsive and I don't really read all the time. But these were I think in a large, extra large, but they're still super tight. So if you do get these, I urge you just to make sure you really do try to get them over your foot because they are compression socks. They're going to be super tight. That's what they do. And even though it, it hurt putting them on, once I got them on, I pretty much had the compression socks on all day. Sometimes I would even sleep in them because they are very comfortable. But I would just say, just maybe step out of them for a little bit throughout the day, if it's like an hour, two hours, something like that. Just keep in mind that compression socks do not work by themselves. You have to make sure that you are staying hydrated as well. So this coupled with water, you should see like zero to little swelling after that. I wanna talk about this. It's super important to wear loose clothing 
during your healing process and not just for comfort but it also helps to make sure that you are healing quickly and you're healing efficiently you don't want anything that's going to be rubbing across your incision and it's causing irritation and you know causing you to have to um, be in recovery longer than you need to right while i was in target i actually went and i picked up some sort of like lounge pants and i got these um, these were no more than like 30 bucks. These are actually maternity pants and these are, again, we're fuzzy. We're fuzzy. Welcome back. These are from Isabel Maternity. So if you guys are familiar with that brand, it's, it's everything. Like I said, this was no more than $30. I picked these up. These are super comfortable and I kid you not, I am wearing these now and I'm not even pregnant anymore. And I'm still wearing these. Y'all definitely have to go out and get yourself some of these pants, cause I'm telling you, you will not be sorry. I even thought like, okay, well $30 for pants, you know, maternity or not, $30 is a little, a little pricey for pants. You know what, you have to think about what's gonna last you in the long run, right? So yeah, you're gonna have to spend a pretty little penny now, but if it's high quality, you know you can wear it for probably years to come, whatever, however long you choose to wear it, you know it will last you. You're not gonna wash it like two times in the laundry and then it's gonna be like kaput after that, right? Do yourself a favor, get yourself some high quality wear, especially because you're pregnant. You want comfort, you want durability. Make sure you spend a little extra change if you have it and do what you gotta do. If not, that's cool too. No judgment, sis. When everything is said and done, it's gonna roughly take you about six months to a year to completely feel like yourself again. And that's okay. Remember just to take it one day at a time. And in the good words of my friend, give yourself some grace. Besides, how can you pour into others when you yourself are empty? Just focus on that new little life because that's the biggest blessing of all. So take these tips and apply them to your life. Feel free to rewatch this video as many times as you need to. And if you know anybody else who needs some advice as well, feel free to share the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.